As Sister Pat said, I am no stranger. My name is Janice Luke, and I've been a member of this church for some 30 plus years. And I'm so happy to be able to share the word of God with you because it's the word. And we hear about so much sickness this morning. But we know who God is and we know what he can do. There's nothing too difficult for him. So we don't fear when we hear these things. We put our faith and trust in the Lord God Almighty because he's never failed us. He never fails. There's no failure in God. He is the great I am, the one who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever do. So this morning, I just want to speak to you on the word of God from Exodus chapter 14, one verse. And if I could give this a title, I would say, stand still. Exodus 14, chapter 13, Exodus 14, verse 13. And Moses said unto the people, fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today, not next week, not next month, not next year, but today. For the Egyptians whom you see, the enemy whom you see today, Ye shall see them again no more. And my Bible says a word after no more. It says forever. So I don't have to worry about this no more. Forever, forever. And that means eternally. So we thank God for his word today. Stand still. Stand still, something of quietness. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you are quiet. But you're standing in the one in whom you put your trust. You're, you're not going to fear because you know that he is able. We saw the Israelites and they were afraid. Moses was supposed to lead them out of the land of Egypt. And they came to a point, they had the plagues. God showed who he was, or who he is rather. And they were still afraid. But in this one crisis time, The, the Egyptians were behind them and the sea was before them. There was like no way out. And sometimes we feel like that. Sometimes we feel like this situation is, a, is an impossible one. I can't see how this problem can be solved. I can't see no way out in this problem. And that's how they felt at that time. So they cried out. But Moses says something to them that was very, very important. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will, not he may, not he could, which he will accomplish for you, not next week, not next month, but today. So I am bringing this to the natural now, today. I believe God is about to do something for somebody today. We come to the miracle service and we hear the word miracle. But very often, many of us think that miracles have long gone. They're no longer happening. But I'm here to tell you today that miracles happen every single day. Every single day. When the Egyptians cried out to the Lord. And they realized that. Sorry, when the Israelites cried out to the Lord. And they realized that the Egyptians 
were upon them. God said to Moses, stretch forth your rod. So I want you to stretch forth some faith today. God said to Moses, stretch forth your rod. And Moses stretched forth the rod. And what happened? What happened to the Egyptians? The sea came back, closed in on them, and every single one of them drowned. All the chariots were destroyed. They're all drowned. And it tells us that all we have to do sometimes is just wait on God. Just wait on God. God has a timing for every single thing. But some may ask, but how can you really stand still in the midst of a storm? All these things happening. How can you stand still? You can stand still because you know the word of God. It is important to know God's word. There are so many scriptures in the Bible concerning fear. And in order to stand still, fear has to go. In order for you to stand still, you must get rid of fear. Because fear torments. Fear takes over the mind. Some people get palpitations in the heart when they are fearful. Some people get headaches when they become fearful. Some people are unable to think logically. They are unable to make decisions when they are afraid. So that's why God is saying in so many parts of the Bible, fear not. Psalms 46 verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. So sometimes we need to just be still. Because then we remember, but, but God, he is God. He could do it. He is God. Be still and know that I am God. God who? God the healer. God the sustainer. God the deliverer. God the one who forgives. God, the one who provides, that's the God that we're talking about today. That we can be still and know who he is. He is whatever we want him to be at any particular time. Three weeks ago, I lost my car key. It was the only car key I had. I couldn't even come to church. I've never missed church a Sunday until then. I went to get in my car, looked for my key, and the key wasn't there. And I looked everywhere. My house was in a turmoil. I searched the house upside down, downside up, looking every crease and corner, places that I don't go, ledges, all kinds of things. Never found the key. And I felt very overwhelmed because when I called NASCO to find out what the key was, what a key was going to cost, they couldn't provide one, but they introduced me to somebody who could do it. And that person had to send somebody to take down my dashboard to get a little computer about this big to take to that person who would create the key. The cost was <laughs> unbelievable. And I was saying, well, let me get some more time. The guy said to me, I'm going to give you some more time to keep looking so that you know, in case you find it, i give you a few more days. So I, I, I continued to look. My next door neighbor, she came, she looked with me, everybody home. They looked, everybody helped me look. We look all around the house, everywhere possible that I, that key might have been, and it was not found to this day. Anyhow, I thought of all the things that I was now gathering money to buy, all of my appliances, my fridge, my washing machine, and my television all went down within weeks. Somebody asked me, you sure something wrong with your electricity? But no, those appliances are 20 plus years. All of them were old. <laughs> so really and truly, I think they had lived out their days. 
But it so happened that this happened at the same time. So I was planning, I was saving the money to, to, to buy the, the, the appliances, and then this happened. When the guy told me, at first he told me $1,800, and I was like, one key for $1,800? You cannot be serious. But then he went down to sixteen. Anyhow, I, I'm still looking, I'm still looking, I'm telling him, all right, you give me the time. I'm looking, I'm looking, can't find the key. Eventually, I had to call him, come, get the little computer. He sent a guy to take down the dashboard. That guy charged $400 just to take down my dashboard to get this little computer and put back up the dashboard. That was 400 Then I said, well, it seemed as though I have no choice. So I went, I called him, and he came, took the, got the little computer that the guy took out, and he started his duty on creating a key. All that week, I was just, I was just saying, Lord, what is all this about? And then I started to say, maybe God, you are protecting me. You were protecting me from something. I was not supposed to be driving that car for some reason. Everybody tell me, you know, you sure this, and this seems like an attack on you and that, this and that. Anyhow, I became calm and I said, God, this is all up to you. The day after I started being calm about it, someone called me and said to me, Come, I want to see you. And I went to the person, and the person gave me a brown envelope. And that envelope had 90% of the cost of the key. I only had to put 10%. I did not ask that person. I did not even share what was happening with that person. But there is a God. There is a God that knows everything. And we can trust him. We can put our trust in him because he knows who we are and he is a provider. And when I got that money, I was like a mad person. I could not believe it. Even though you know who God is, you know, when it actually happens to you, you're, you know, I was, I was like, God, oh God, who's like unto you? I was all about the house skipping and jumping. Because, to be honest with you, that really would have been a real stretch for me. And so, I thank God this morning that we can trust him. We can trust him. When God told Moses, look, stretch out your rod. And Moses was obedient. And sometimes, that's our problem. We are not obedient. Sometimes we hear God saying something to us, but it seems so strange. It seems so unusual. And sometimes we are wondering what others are going to think if we do this thing. What, what is somebody going to say? Why you look like a mad woman? You know, but, you know, be obedient to God. I have proved over and over again that once we become obedient to God, he will not let us down. He will not let us down. So I want you this morning to understand and know and be reminded because all of these are things that we know. That if you are facing this morning some kind of crisis, you are facing some kind of situation, you have come to a place in your life where you want to throw your hands up and give up. Don't give up. God has a timing for your miracle. God has a timing for your miracle. He's a faithful God. He will never let you down. And you know why God gives us miracles? So that we can share them with others. And so that other people can be encouraged in the Lord. You don't know who is there waiting to hear that word. That is beginning to feel downcast and forgotten. And you come and you share a testimony about what God has done for you. You don't know how it will touch that person. How it will cause that person to, to rise up and be encouraged. Because God wants each and every one of us to know that there's nothing 
nothing that he cannot do. So when he, when he thought of the Egyptians, I remember in the verses before that, they began to complain. They began to complain and murmur. Moses, you bring us out here in the wilderness to, to kill us. We could have stayed. We could have stayed. And let the Egyptians, you know, be their slaves. We could have stayed where we were. But you bring us out here in this wilderness place to kill us. And they became furious. Sometimes we become furious when things happen to us. We, we say, I'm a Christian. I serve in the Lord for so long. And, and, and all these things happening to me. Why? Why, God? Why are you allowing these things to happen to me? But God had a great plan. And he always has a plan. He's always planning. And his plans are for purpose. His plans have a purpose to them. Everything that a Christian goes through, there's a purpose for it. Because the word of God says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Our steps are ordered by God. So we don't have to fear. That's why God could tell Moses, stand still. We don't have to fear when we know who our God is. There's so many scriptures that says, Isaiah 41 says, says fear not, I am with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will do what? Strengthen you. I will do what? I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Not just any hand. The righteous right hand. That hand of power. I will uphold you with that hand. Then 2 Timothy verses one, ver, chapter 1, verses 7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. But it didn't just stop there. It says, but he has given us what? Power, love, and a sound mind. That means our self-control. He has given us a sound mind. We are able to think clearly. And then Joshua 1, 9 says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed. For the Lord, your God, is with you. And he's saying that to you today. Do not be dismayed. Do not lose hope. Do not lose heart. And then, in Psalms 34, verse 4, it says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. Is God the one who answers prayer? Yes, he is. He answered me, and he didn't only answer me. He delivered me from all of those fears that I had. He took them all away. And the last one, Psalms 27, verses 1 to 2, said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear then? If he's my light, if he's guiding me, if he's directing me, whom shall I fear? And that verse goes on to say, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, what happened to them? They stumbled and fell. They had no power over me. They had no power over me. So today, if you have came here with something, if you came here with some problem, and you're saying, God, I'm tired of this problem. I have prayed. I have asked you, but the problem still exists. God is saying, stand still. Stand still. Stand still because I am still God. I am still the creator of the ends of the world, of the earth. God is saying, do not waver. Just rest in me. You will experience exactly what the Israelites experienced. Because they not only didn't have to worry about the Egyptians at that time anymore, but God said forever, 
He says, forever. You will never have to worry about those Egyptians no more. I finished them off. I took care of them. So this is what God is saying. That problem that you have today. He is saying to you. I can take it. I can take it from you. You will not have to worry about this problem anymore. God is saying, just as Moses stretched forth that rod, and that was the, the, the piece of equipment that God used, a little rod, the thing God used to bring Moses' faith into a different level. He says, stretch forth that rod. And as he stretched forth that rod, everything that Moses desired happened because the Egyptians were obliterated. They were gone forever. And so today, I want to just say to you, don't be overwhelmed. If it is sickness, God is a healer. He is more than able. Isaiah 53, 5 says, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. Why? Because he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes, we are healed. And if we are, were healed, and if we were healed, we are healed. So we can stand on the word of God this morning. I want to ask a question. How many of you, when you are, when you have a serious problem, I'm not talking about maybe just a little problem, maybe come to a point where these bills are piling up, you have a child who is wearer that have been giving you trouble and more and more trouble. There's no food in the cupboard. You've come to a point in your life where you don't know where to turn. Now, I've, I've asked people, they have given me, but I've come to the point now where, God, nothing is happening. I've lost my job. What am I going to do? What must I do? I've done everything that I think I can do. But the problem is still before me. Is there anyone here like that? Is there anyone that would say, it's all over for me because I just got diagnosed with a terminal illness. God is able, brethren. God is able, church. If that is you this morning, I am here to tell you there is nothing impossible with God. Let God be your strength this morning. Let God be your helper this morning. Let God be your healer this morning. Let God be your provider this morning. Let God do what only he can do. Sometimes we run to friends. And a friend might say, all right, I can help you. But when the time comes for that friend to help, you don't see the friend at all. You can't find the friend. You call the friend and the phone ringing. And ringing and ringing and ringing. So, but you know something? We don't have to worry about that with God. Especially when we stand still and listen to hear what he has to say to us. He's going to give us something. He's going to tell us something. God never ignores us. Sometimes we just can't wait. Sometimes we are just too much in a hurry. And God wants to do something in our lives. But he has a way to do it, a time to do it, and a place to do it. But you are saying, but God, 
you, 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 you don't love me no more. God, you, you, I have been praying. I didn't see you do this for this body and that body. And you're, you're talking about all the different things that you know other people experience. And, I'm, and you're still here. You're still here wondering what it is I have done or what has, have I not done that God is not answering my prayer. I'm here to tell you God always answers prayer. He doesn't always answer it the way that we want him to. The way that he did it for Pat, he may not do it for you. The way that he did it for Sister Pam, he may not do it for you. But he will do it. And he knows exactly what you have need of. Because sometimes God is speaking to us in so many ways. But because it is not the normal way, we don't realize. Sometimes we have the answer right there in front of us. Right in front of us. The answer is right there. But we are still praying and saying, God, what happening? What happening? But until we stop and be quiet, then we can only hear and see what God is saying to us. That's why he could say, because the, Egyptian, the, the Israelites there were flustered and they were, I mean, they were crying out, God, you know, they couldn't understand why God was doing this to them. But because they were so consumed with what was happening, they focused on the problem and not on the problem solver, who is almighty God. They were focusing so much on the problem. But God is saying, take your eyes off the problem today. Cast your eyes upon me. Cast your eyes upon me. I have a great plan for your life. Just as I had a plan for the Israelites, I have a great plan for your, for your life. I have a plan. God had a plan for my life when I lost my keys. God had a plan for my life. He was still planning my life. He didn't stop planning it because I could not, I could not leave home in a vehicle. But I, I got, I, many times I call and I ask people for a ride. When we were going, I remember to the... Um, up the thoughts, I got a ride. I did not allow that car to stop me from going where I wanted to go. And as long as I could get a ride, I still went wherever I was going. It was just the first morning that I missed my keys. By the time I was looking for the keys and looking for the keys, the time had gone for church. But after that, I just put those keys out of my mind and I began I said, look, this ain't stopping me from going away, going to church anymore. I came to church the evening. I went, we went, I went to Tars and enjoyed myself. And I, I actually forgot all about those keys during the time I was at Tars because it was such a beautiful evening. And so I want to say to you today, don't let fear cripple you. Fear is a crippler. Fear cripples you. So I want you to know today that you do not have to fear. You do not have to fear. When the, when the Israelites realized that the enemy was gone, they were actually, it was actually unbelievable. Because God did it in such a way that he just, he just dry up. I mean, put, put back the water where there was dry land. And they couldn't even see what was going on. The, all the wheels of the chariots were destroyed. The Egyptians were destroyed. And in one moment, God could do that in your situation. In one moment. He's the same God. He doesn't change. God never changes. What would you want him to do today? The scripture says, talks about doing today. It doesn't say next week. It says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord accomplished today. So what do you want God to accomplish for you today? There is nothing that he cannot do. So I just want to 
tell you this morning, if that is you today, if that is you that are facing a crisis, and you, want, you come here and you say, God, I, am, I don't want to go back the same way you came. I am expecting something from you today. I am expecting something from you today. I am expecting something from you today, God. If that is you today, raise your hand. If you come here and you feel like, God, I don't know where to turn. I don't know where else to go. I don't know who else to talk to. God is saying, I am here. I am here. I am here. I am whatever you want me to be today. I can heal you. I can deliver you. I can deliver your children. I can deliver any, any, anything. I am the great deliverer. There is nothing that I cannot do. Look, I always marvel at myself. I saw, it was so interesting. I saw my gynecologist two days ago. And he was the one who delivered my children. And I, when I saw him, I got so excited because I hadn't seen him in years. And he said to me, I said, you know who this is? And he said to me, of course, I could never forget you. And the reason why he couldn't forget me was he was the one whom I shared with y'all already about when I had my kidney, a, a tumor on my kidney, and he looked at me and shook his head. And I, it was so interesting that I saw him two days ago, and he said, every time I see you, I think of a miracle. That was, those were his words to me. So even if he was not a Christian, when that happened, I'm sure it impacted him because he was at the place where, where he spoke to me. He didn't know what, he didn't even want to tell me. He didn't know how to tell me what the x-ray had showed. But when he saw me on Tuesday, he said, you are truly a miracle. That was nearly four, I think it's about 40 years now ago. And I'm standing here only because the almighty God is a great healer. There is nothing he cannot do. The almighty God is able, when, when you hear a word that causes people trepidation and fear, and you hear and you talk to them and say, oh my God, I could stand here and say, that word did not confuse me. That word, that tumor word did not confuse me. That cancer word did not confuse me. I made up my mind that day that if God, you are the God whom I read about in my Bible. I was just a young Christian at the time. And I shared that with you before. But I, it was interesting that just before I come to share this message, that I would have seen the gynae. And he would be saying to me, you are truly a walking miracle. Because he know what he saw on those x-rays. He know what he saw on that ultrasound. He knew what he saw. And what he saw didn't look good to him. But thank God today, Thank God today. Every time I get a physical, it is good. Everything is good. I thank God today, and I say so not boastfully, but I can boast in God. I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have diabetes. My mom was a diabetic for pretty much half her life. And I thank God today that God is the one who keeps. God is the one who keeps. Brethren, God is the one who keeps. You could experience God today in that same way. If that is you today and you feel, if God could do that for Sister Janice, he could do it for me. If God 
could cause somebody to put an envelope in my hand and give me nearly all the money that I needed to pay for that key, he could do it for you today. He, there is he, there's no favorites with God. So if that is you today and you want God to do something that you know nobody else can do but God, only God can do it, I want you to stand. I want you to stand. And I want you to believe, truly believe God today. Let your faith be stretched. Think of Moses stretching that rod. But God, this sounds foolish though. You can just stretch across a rod, a, 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 a thing, a dry land. And then all that, that whole army coming there at me. They're coming and they're coming with full force. And all they can do is stretch across a rod. God, what do you mean? But he was obedient. He didn't say, God, how, how, how this can happen? He didn't stop. He just obeyed God. So today, even as you stretch across your faith and you obey God, I believe with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, I see miracles even before that happen today. I see them in my spirit. I see them. God is going to do it for you today. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you see your people, Lord God. You know every single need that each one standing has. You are God Almighty and there is nothing too difficult for you. And God, just as you did them for the Israelites that day, just as you took care of of the Egyptians, their enemy. Lord, in the name of Jesus, whatever the enemy is today, be it sickness, be it, oh God, be it lack of faith, oh God, today, whatever the enemy is today, be it the bills are piling up, be it whatever, God, you are able and more than able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ask, think, or desire. So God, we come to you today, the one who is able, my God, the one who set the stars in place and called them by name, my God, the one who caused a dry land to become sea. Oh God, today, the one who called the sea to come no further than the shore. Oh my God, there is nothing too difficult for you. So Lord, this morning, oh God, cause your people to experience you. Oh God, in a mighty way today even as they call out whatever it is as they say to you whatever it is that they experience in Lord touch, heal, deliver, provide for you are all these things Lord God and Father we thank you we thank you today we give you thanks that we will go home we will leave this place with assurance that God you have heard and you have answered in the mighty name of Jesus. So Lord, we just give you worship. We give you adoration this morning. We bless the name of Jesus. We exalt your great name this morning because of who you are and because of what you have done for us. We God, we thank you, Lord, oh God, for causing us to stretch our faith to the another level, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we are careful, Lord, to come back like the leper and say, thank you, Lord. 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 Glory be to the most high God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen.